Welcome to Forever Family. This week for Come Follow Me, we are doing 1 Nephi chapters 8 through 10, which includes Lehi's vision. Before we get started, I want to read something from the Come Follow Me manual for families and individuals, or individuals and families, from this week's lesson. Even if you have studied Lehi's vision, Lehi's vision many times, this time, think about it in the way Lehi did. Think of someone you love. As you do, the security of the iron rod, the dangers of the spacious building, and the sweetness of the fruit will take on new meaning, and you will understand more deeply all the feeling of the tender parent who received this remarkable vision. After reading this quote, it really made me realize how important it is to teach our girls the gospel. <laughs> And even if we do everything we can, <laughs> and even if we do everything that we possibly can to prepare our girls in the gospel and know how much they are, and know how much they are loved. Maya, are you loved? She's very loved. <laughs> the truth is that we as parents can do everything right, but sometimes our children aren't going to make it to the tree of life. Sometimes they're gonna be like Lamb and Alemuel and they won't make it. And that is just... It's hard to be serious right now trying to discuss this. Sometimes we can do everything right, but we might not always make it to the tree of life, unfortunately. And, that's, and that makes mommy really sad because if one of you didn't make it to the tree of life, I would be heartbroken. And I can only imagine the way Lehi felt when he realized that Lady Millennial didn't want to partake of the fruit. Instead, they just wanted all the worldly things. They didn't care about Heavenly Father or Jesus. That's mean to blame on the radio. That is mean, isn't it? Yeah. I don't want you blaming the radio. Mm. Who do you guys want to be like? I want to be like Laban. Like Laban. You mean Laban the Wicked King? No. Or Nephi the Good Brother? Which one is that? Nephi. Yeah, Nephi. I'll be Nephi. Who's gonna be? You can be Nephi too. You can be just like Nephi and choose the right. Oh, I want to choose Jesus. Yeah. Correct. For our first activity this week is the Iron Rod Challenge. Mm -hmm. But before we start the game with the girls, let's discuss the four groups of people in Lehi's vision. Hey. So we know which group the girls will fall into after the challenge. Woo. Group one, never found the iron rod and were lost. They are those who ignore or treat lightly the word of God. So they don't have access to that divine compass which points the way to the Savior. Group two, made it to the tree and partook of the fruit, but became ashamed and became lost. Even with faith, commitment, and the word of God, this group eventually was lost, perhaps because they only periodically read or studied or searched the scriptures. Group three, made it to the tree and partook of the fruit as well, but they stayed there. They were never lost. Perhaps this third group of people consistently read and studied and searched the scriptures. This is the group you and I should strive to join. <coughs> Now this last group, group four, did not seek after the tree, desiring instead the great and spacious building as their ultimate destination. These descriptions can be found in David A. Bednar's talk, Lehi's Dream, Holding Fast to the Rod. Now let's get on to the Iron Rod Challenge. Are you girls ready to go outside? No, outside it is snowy. It's snowy. Okay, well let's just rewind back to this morning when it wasn't snowing. How about that? Yeah. Do you remember what we did this morning? 
Okay. I, I see chalky and oranges and I went to the bench and eat some yummy cupcakes and have bone and orange in the black tablet. They're not mine. Here we have our iron rod for our iron rod challenge. And over here, we have our great and spacious building with yummy cupcakes and devices and candy. So we'll see if the girls are tempted. And here is our tree of life with some oranges and Jesus. Okay, and our iron rod. And then again, our great and spacious building. <laughs> girls, are you ready for the iron rod challenge? What's the iron rod challenge? Here's what's gonna happen. You have two choices. You can walk down this path to the tree of life, or you can go into the grass and go to that bench and play in your tablets and eat the cupcakes over there and have some candy. So, you can choose if you wanna go all the way down to Jesus. Hold on, hold on or if you wanna go eat cupcakes and stuff, okay? And mommy is going to be two different voices. I'm gonna be the Holy Ghost voice, and I'm gonna be Satan voice, okay? okay? And you have to walk, and you have to go slow, so you can decide, okay? So when I say start, we're gonna start, okay? Okay, no, you both got the same time, okay? Okay, go, walk slow. Go to Jesus, go to Jesus, he loves you! No, go to Jesus, Evie. Evie, go to Jesus, he loves you. Oh, but then you can't play with your tablet. Do you wanna play with your tablet? It's better than Jesus. Go sit on the bench, it's so much better. It's so much better. Do you wanna be with Jesus? Evie, Jesus loves you, come to Jesus. You don't want an orange? Okay, you can sit at the bench. The bench is so much better, so much better. Sit at the bench, sit at the bench, eat the cupcake, eat the cupcake. <laughs> Maddie, would you like an orange? The orange is Jesus' love for you. Do you want to eat Jesus' love? Oh, Evie, you want to come to Jesus too? You love Jesus? I'm here. So, where's your final destination, Evie? Are you at the tree? Or do you want to go sit at the bench and eat all that food? Because if you don't if you stay here, you don't get it. You don't get that yummies. Where are you going? No! Maddie, come back! Don't leave Jesus! Don't leave Jesus! He loves you! Eat 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 the orange! Eat the orange! Eat the orange! Go eat the cupcakes! Go eat the cupcakes. What's better, cupcakes or oranges? No, Maddie, don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. <laughs> eat the or. Go eat the cupcakes. No, Maddie, don't leave. <laughs> Maddie, make a decision. Do you want to stay or do you want to go? You want to stay here with Jesus? Do you want to stay here with Jesus? Do you want to stay here with Jesus? Okay, go ahead and sit down with Jesus. I'll help you peel that. There's Maya. Matt, Evie, are you going to eat a cupcake? You going to eat the candy? Evie, sit down. Sit down. Hi, Maya. So have you decided you're going to stay here? You don't get a cupcake, you chose Jesus. You get a yummy, delicious orange. Evie's digging into that candy. <laughs> Do you, are you sure you don't wanna be with Jesus? Just spit that candy out right now and go be with Jesus. No? Okay. And that is the end of our tree of life, or our iron rod. But Jesus is so much better, Maddie. Isn't Jesus so much better than anything else in the entire world? Yeah, I like candy. You like candy? You know what? Jesus will bless you with lots of stuff. 
Okay. Okay. So, do you guys remember the tree of life? Yeah. It has yummy fruit. It does have yummy fruit. It has strawberries. Oh, do you guys remember what that fruit represents? Oh, it makes love. It does make love. Good job for remembering. And kindness. And kindness. It's kindness. Yeah. The did fruit. Not, did not mean. Yeah. It represents Jesus' love for us. God's love for us. Hey, Daddy, you know Jesus grew that tree? Jesus grew that tree? Yeah. Now, let's talk about which group each girl fell into. Maddie, I think you fell into group three, who got to the tree, she ate her orange, and she stayed with Jesus, right? And then her Jesus ate nothing. Were you tempted to leave the tree of life though? You almost did sometimes. Yeah, but you stayed, so good job. Now, Evie. You, I went to the bed. You went to the great and spacious building. I went into the building. You did go into the building, is that good? Yeah. Are you sure that's a good thing? No. Oh, you, we should strive to go to the tree of life so we can be with Jesus. Mm -hmm. But that's okay, because you're still really little, and you're still learning how to choose the right and how to make good decisions, right? So I'm going to categorize Evie as group two. She kind of went to the tree, and then she kind of went back to the bench, and then she kind of went back and forth. So we'll say group two. And hopefully she'll end up in group three, right? For our next activity, we have this tree of life maze and coloring page. We need to find our way to the tree of life without getting stuck in the worldly things. What's the worldly thing? Worldly things are like the great and spacious building. Yeah. Yeah. I like that building. Pick yeah. a crane, girls. I got this tree. Okay, we're going to start right one? here. Maya. Start right here. Start. Start, and you have to make it all the way in here, okay? All the way in here. So follow the path. Which way are you going to go? I'm going to go this way. Get in. Get in. Get in. Get in. Get in. Evie's doing a good job. Did you? I don't know how to get to that path. Here, why don't you go up here? You see, there's a hole right there you can go through. Go through that next hole. Okay. Okay. Do I need to go past this? Mom, do I need to go past this? You can't. There's no hole to get in there. Why don't you go back the other way and see if you can find a hole over here? You see a hole right there? Yeah. I'm just going... Dead end! Go back and find another hole you could go up. There you go. Oh, Maya, don't do that. I'm gonna color a tree. Oh, you're gonna color your tree? I made it to the tree of life! Good job! Good job. Can I pass this? Go ahead and color your tree. I'm gonna color this. I need a little tree. Thank you. I like yours too. Daddy, you have to do the maze. Over Daddy, you need to go from here so you can get to the tree. Are you cheating by looking at their maze? No. <laughs> you better not. <laughs> Cover your mazes up so Daddy can't cheat. Don't let him see. Don't let him see. Look, you need a oh. hole. You made a wrong turn, Maddie, but guess what? You got back on the path, straight path, right? See? But guess what? You turned around and made it right, huh? And look at mine! Whoa, Evie! You supposed to do that! I follow the path! Wow! I pull, 
I followed the path. You started off pretty rough, huh? You didn't know where to go. Oh yeah. See, so look how look how confused you were at first. And now I finally. And made then it. you figured it out, huh? Once you got the iron rod, look how straight you got. Let me see your picture, Maddie. Oh, it's the rod. It's called to the rod station. So you walk on the path. Good job, it's girls. It is time to add our next scripture to our scripture wall. And this one is 1 Nephi 8, 12. And it says, And as I partook of the fruit thereof, it filled my soul with exceedingly great joy. Wherefore, I began to be desirous that my family should partake of it also. For I knew that it was desirable above all other fruit. Now, whose turn is it to pick? I think it's Maddie's turn. Maddie, pick our spot, please. And then me? It filled. It filled. My soul. My soul. With. With. X. Okay, girls, turn around, smile. Mommy, smile. And we now have five scriptures on the wall. Before we move on from chapter eight, I want to share with you guys a piece of home decor that I made to help remind us to always hold to the rod. This is our own piece of iron rod. You see the pictures I put in it? So we have all of us in front of the a Jesus statue at the Missouri Independence Visitor Center. And then that's the Kansas City Temple picture that I took. Maddie, Eden, Daddy, and Jesus. Right. And the temple, and Maddie, and Evie, and Maya, and Daddy, and Mommy. Right, so the girls are reading their scriptures, and that's when John and I got married. <laughs> So always remember to hold to the rod. And you guys can always grab onto this just to remember to hold onto the rod, right? That works right. Can I hold onto the rod? Yeah. I don't remember. And I'm gonna hang this up by our front door so that whenever we leave the house, we can remember to hold to the rod. In chapter 10, Nephi talks about the scattering of Israel, which brings us to our next activity. This is an olive tree. I, I want to say it's an olive tree. It is an olive tree. I want to say. We're going to read verses 12. Olive tree. We're going to read verses 12, 13, and 14. It's an olive tree. Is yeah, it? it's an olive tree. Chapter 10, verse 12, verse 25. Yea, even my father spake much concerning the Gentiles, and also concerning the house of Israel, that they should be compared like unto an olive tree, whose branches should be broken off and should be scattered upon all the face of the earth. Okay, what did that verse just say? What happens to this olive tree? Scatter our branches. That's how it's scattered. Yep, scatter them. How many branches do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, Twelve. Twelve branches. And what do these branches represent? The house realm. No, the houses of Israel. Good job, the houses of Israel, yes. Wherefore, he said it must needs be that we should be led with one accord into the land of promise, unto the fulfilling of the word of the Lord, that we should be scattered upon all the face of the earth. 
And after the house of Israel should be scattered, they should be gathered together again. Or, in fine, after the Gentiles had received the fullness of the gospel, the natural branches of the olive tree, or the remnants of the house of Israel, should be grafted in, or come to a knowledge of the true Messiah, their Lord and their Redeemer. Good job, you built the tree back up. So after the Gentiles received the fullness of the gospel, they became whole again. Just like your tree did. Now we are going to talk about the Holy Ghost in chapter 10, verse 19, which we will also be putting on our wall. As we read that verse, the Holy Ghost, which is represented by this white blanket, will unfold and wrap around you girls. Because the Holy Ghost is a spirit, and it comforts you just like a blanket can. It says, For he that diligently seeketh shall find, and the mysteries of God shall be unfolded unto them. By the power of the Holy Ghost, as well in these times as in times of old. And as well in times of old as in times to come. Therefore, or wherefore, the course of the Lord is one eternal round. <laughs> so the Holy Ghost is here to comfort you when you're sad. And make you feel warm. Make you feel good about decisions you've made. Let's read what the Holy Ghost is real quick, okay? The Holy Ghost is the third member of the Godhead. He is a personage of spirit without body or flesh or bone. He is often re re referred to as the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the Lord, or the Comforter. Hence our blanket. Hence his blanket. Yes. Here. Up here? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna come stand over here. Okay, first Nephi 1019. Girls, which scripture did we just put on the wall? Um, I don't know. One all the way up top? Here's one. First Nephi 10, 19. Our final activity is an object lesson about being spiritually unclean. Um, and how we can repent to be clean again. How we repent to be clean again. We're going to talk about that. In First Nephi 10, 20 through 22 it says no unclean thing can dwell with heavenly father so how can we keep our spirits clean so look at this this water is your spirit and it's clean right now okay you have clean spirits you're not gonna put your faces in the water here's your spirit and here are all the bad things you guys do all these bad things right tell me something that you do that's not easy Something into our and No, what's something that you do that's naughty? I went to the bench and ate some young tech things. That was a bad thing. <laughs> and, uh, you went to the great and spacious building yesterday? Yes. Go ahead and pour just one shake in your water. Oh, good job. Okay, Maddie, what's something that you do that's naughty? hit sometimes yeah. okay go ahead and shake pick something to shake into your water okay girls now I want you to try and clean your water can you clean your water for me can you take all the ickies out I don't know can you clean your water for me yeah clean your spirits for me can you clean those for me? You can't clean your spirits, can you, by yourself? You need help, don't you? This is the repentance process. And we are going to fill this up with everything that we're supposed to do 
for it's our to repent so that we can make our spirits clean again, okay? So first, you're gonna put your big rocks. I want you to dump all those rocks in here, Evie, Maddie. Maddie, pour all of your rocks in here, okay? Yeah. These rocks, go and pour them in. So hard. rocks represent knowing that you made a mistake because you can't repent and say you're sorry until you know that you made a mistake. Maddie, you have the next big bowl of rocks. Those rocks mean that you're going to try and fix your mistake. It's called... Okay, go ahead and pour those in. So this is you trying and trying to fix your mistake. Yep, you're going to try and fix your mistake. Did her fix her mistake? Now, Evie, you're going to pour the sand in, and this sand means you need to forgive others and forgive yourself. Okay. Is Evie going to do two and do the dirt? Right. So we have, know you made a mistake and say sorry. Try to fix your arm mistakes, and now the next layer is forgive others and forgive yourself. Good job. It's going all the way to the bottom. It is going all the way to the bottom. And it's coming all the way out. Okay, stop coming out, sand. Okay, hurry, hurry, hurry. The dirt means keep the commandments. Pour it in there, keep the commandments. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Oh, too much. Keep the commandments. That's okay. Make a mess. We'll vacuum it up. Keep the commandments. Okay. Now, we're going to add all these layers back up again. No, we made a mistake and say sorry, Evie. Pour it in. I want to pour it in. Pour it in. Pour it in. Now... Try and fix our mistakes. Try oh. to make up for what why, we did. Why did you get so no free? Okay, Maddie, your turn. Grab your sand. Forgive others and forgive ourselves. Okay, and last one. The dirt keeps the commandments. repentance process and now you're gonna pour your water your dirty spirits in and see how clean they are one at a time one at a time it's okay oh, oh. okay it's okay pour it all in pour it in let's see the water come out all clean at the bottom so okay Evie go ahead and pour yours in is it going to come down yeah it's gonna filter through Did you put a lid all the way on? Good job, Evie. There's, there's the water. The, the you see thing. it coming down? I see the, I see all the things changing. Let me wash my hands. Evie, it's okay. Just wipe it on your shirt. Oh, there's the water. It's almost to the bottom. Really? Come here, Evie. Watch it drip. Water is slowly dripping out. Drip. I smell? Drip. Who wants to taste it? No, no, no. I don't want to taste it. It might have to be filtered a couple times before you can <laughs> taste it. It's pretty clear. It is pretty clear. I think the um, white rock residue is going down through the... I should have washed the rocks off first. So the lesson is, 
If we want to live with Heavenly Father someday, we need to be clean. We need to hold fast to the iron rod. We need to remember that the Lord loves us. Heavenly Father loves us. Don't you know that? This filter, <laughs> while the water isn't perfectly clean yet. <gasps> Somebody tipped the water. You're in big trouble. Oh yeah, who's gonna get me in trouble? Um, the, you're, you're the dirty spirit water you just dumped all over yourself? Ah. What's it smell like? Um, I don't know. What? Bay leaves? Basil leaves? Onion powder? Allspice? It smells like butt, yucky, stir. Okay, do not move this again. Anyways, we just need to remember to repent and always say sorry when we make mistakes and try to do better the next time, okay? And of course, we can't forget about the Book of Mormon stories. This week we read chapter six, which is all about Lehi's vision. Lehi's dream. Vision and dream. Yes. <laughs> Everything we use in this video is linked below. And please share with us the activities you did this week to learn more about Heavenly Father's love for you. We would love to hear your experiences. And remember, families can be together forever. Yeah. And don't forget to subscribe. Like it. Bye bye. Bye. And. <laughs> and. Rah! We will see you next week. Bye. Bye.